vada meno il catalogo è questo delle belle che mo il parlo mio un catalogo io cosa dio osservate leggete con me osservate leggete con me Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, go check that one out. Or don't. I'm not your parent. Make your own decisions. To recap, Nick and I made a chessboard which can show you where each piece can move. For example, if you wanted to move the pawn, these squares will light up. If you wanted to move the bishop, these squares will light up. If you want to move your house, nothing will light up because houses are very heavy. Though if you live in a caravan, different story. Now this wasn't finished since the PCB parts hadn't arrived in time and also castling on Passant and the entire concept of check wasn't considered. I said I was going to solve these problems. And you can call this Postman Pat because we've delivered. But before we go into it, let's go back to how we got here. Before, before there, was, there time, was time, before there was space, there was an idea. And that idea was to 3D print the chessboard. So Nick sent me the CAD so I could P-R-I-N-T and make it into 3D. You see, it didn't work that well. This could be because when I tested it, I didn't have any actual diodes. But the good thing about LEDs is that that D stands for diode. So I used the LEDs to light up the LEDs. Needless to say, it was awful. So that's why we did the perf board thing and... Wait a minute! Hold up. This is the Chessinator 3000. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. You can change the colours of it. It's the greatest chessboard of all time. The question is, did I do those things that I said I was going to do? Now there's two types of people, those who have no idea what I'm talking about, and those who know that I have no idea what I'm talking about. Regardless, the reactions of the code will still be this. People are really into chess programming. While some people can code an entire engine in 100 lines, I can code the bishop moves in 300. But it wasn't always going to be this way. Initially I wanted to code the entire thing using C++, doing object-oriented programming, using all the classes and stuff to really keep the code quite neat, while also using the STL containers like vectors to hold all the data. But then I did some googling and it told me that Arduino doesn't really handle STL containers that well. So that idea went straight into the bin. Pretty much the coding went like this. Okay, so what's happening then? Um... A lot. Our entire project relies on the Arduino ADC. So the first thing was to make sure that it's accurate enough to reach the 12 specific voltages. Otherwise, the entire idea doesn't work. There were a few scares though. Same code, same type of Arduino, same pin connections. But on my serial monitor, it displays 1024. But on his serial monitor, it just displays 14. Why don't we tell you about these lame problems? This ain't Dr. Phil. Let's get into the new stuff. If you don't know what Ompasson is, it's basically a glitch the developers forgot to patch out back in the day. The code's pretty simple. All we have to do is just check if the pawns are still at the start, then we check if it's moved twice, and if there's an opposing pawn here, the pawn can take and can move there. Castling's pretty much the same. We just make sure the rooks of the king haven't moved yet, and that there's nothing in between them, but a bing bang boom. Now it's time for the big boy challenges. Check. To implement check, you need to check everything, the tiles, the pieces, the potential movements, your tires, your tables, your tim tams, everything needs to be checked, otherwise the code would be wrecked. So I inspected every tile to find every piece on the board, and then determined every possible move from each piece, to make sure the king doesn't commit suicide. It was a difficult job, I've never tapped a semicolon button so much in my life, but in the end, we got there. Now there's one thing I haven't mentioned, the big boy, the unattainable, the best possible move. Now I really didn't want to do this because it sounds like effort and that's against my beliefs. There were three options. We either incorporate a Raspberry Pi and use Stockfish like some guy did. We try and find an Arduino chess engine or we build our own. Now I've never seen a Raspberry Pi in my life, let alone use one. So I googled to see if there were any Arduino chess engines already made. Found it, looked at the code, saw it had a random number generator and was like, Nope. Now there's no way I'm going to go and program my own Stockfish. Nick was like, oh! Found the same chess engine I did, and realized the random number generator had nothing to do with the actual engine. We got the code. Unfortunately, it was the most unreadable thing in history, because the guy was trying to be super cool and make the code really small, and use the entire alphabet as your variables. Come on, man. After a bit of fine tuning, we successfully implemented the code. And to make sure that it works, we decided to play a game, where Nick would use the best possible move, and I would fight against it. Now we were still in lockdown during this time, so Nick had the actual board to read off while I had this screen. 
and here's the game so I'm white and Nick and the chess engine are black let's see how it goes so I start with the classic move the king's pawn forward to e4 brilliant move and as you can see the computer copies and does the same and now I'm going into my classic my classic bread and butter the Vienna game playing my horse out down to here now what's what's the black going to do he's going to copy me wow brilliant brilliant stuff by the engine now let's see what's going to happen next I'm going to be putting my bishop down to c4 and now we see another horse being brought out and now we are ready for the first blunder of the game because I'm looking at a screen with a bunch of numbers on it and unfortunately some people make mistakes now I thought I could play my classic Vienna gambit unfortunately this is just a terrible move we see we've taken the pawn as he should now I'm still I still haven't realized that the horse is still here so I'm going to move up here giving him another pawn so no, I'm not off to a great start as you can see I moved this pawn trying to salvage anything in fact that was actually an awful move because now I lose my bishop from his horse and now I'm in bit of danger and I play my horse there you know really just a classic move we see okay we see this bishop he's moved it here I'm um, sorry instead I do my casting as you can see that now my king is fairly safe we see he copies me because he has no originality whatsoever because it's a computer now I move this pawn just trying to get this horse out of the way you know we see the horse move here now this looks very dangerous if I didn't have this bishop which can just not go there it can kill that so you can take this pawn and now we're back to here now here's the game changing moment okay this is the brilliant move the brilliant the greatest move of all time it's the queen here now on paper this doesn't look like it does anything but on the actual chessboard we have this specific square was bugging out so that means it's actually not reading anything on this square even though there's a queen there now this is brilliant for me because now the, the robot doesn't think there's a queen there but obviously there is so the robot he keeps just carrying along you know he does I think he pushed or something like that and instead of doing anything I just do this and now he's the greatest blunder of all time the horse to d5 and now he's just lost checkmate because he couldn't read this piece at all and I've won the game so turn it on mm -hmm. now okay well that's a knight now that all the software was working it was time to work on the pieces because no one really wants to move a bunch of resistors around so Nick sent me the pieces and I 3d printed them we got the pawns we got the bishops the rooks <laughs> the knight the kings and the queens to hold the resistors we needed bases and we went through a bunch of iterations so much so that i ran out of white filament after figuring out the tolerances it was time to solder it was now much easier to debug the entire chessboard okay for some reason the king cannot move down this entire diagonal Ooh. look so what's what's checking it see see how it flashes check now in hindsight you can't really see pieces move so, if you look at this, yeah, I mean that's a flaw, okay, this is a king, you are not in check. Once all that stuff was fixed, we were left with this. With that, it was time for game two. Do it.